A very good morning to you, my dear sisters and brothers, and welcome to Karma Light, to the day's reflection. Let us invoke the name of the Trinity before we start our reflection. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, today is the 9th of May, Sunday, and we are celebrating the 6th Sunday of Easter. Today we are celebrating also Mother's Day. On the 9th of May, we remember and honor St. George Preca, who was a Maltese Catholic priest and the founder of the Society of Christian Doctrine, as well as a Third Order Carmelite. Pope John Paul II dubbed him Malta's second father in faith. George Breca was born in Valletta on 12 February 1880, the seventh of nine children. Breca was a frail child due to a range of illnesses he had, and in 1885, almost drowned in the harbour, though boatmen rescued him. In 1897, while walking along the Maglio Gardens in Floriana, George Breca met one of his professors, Father Ercole Mompelau, who encouraged his religious vocation. Preca first studied at the state-owned school on the island before he commenced his studies for the priesthood. He had studied Latin and English, but also studied Italian. Shortly before his ordination, Preca was diagnosed with acute pulmonary tuberculosis and given a poor prognosis. He attributed his recovery to the intercession of St. Joseph, patron of the dying, However, the illness left him with a damaged left lung. On 8 April 1905, his confessor Aloysius Gallia died and Preca would often recount that not long after, Gallia seemingly appeared to him and encouraged his call to the priesthood. Preca received his ordination to the priesthood alongside 13 others on 22 December 1906. He began to teach the Catholic Catechism along the waterfront to people, including laborers, and to gather male catechists around him. In February 1907, he arranged a spiritual conference at the Tar Nuzo Church. This led to the founding of a new religious movement on 7 March 1907 at Hamran at the first meeting of the Society of Christian Doctrine. Senior clergy began to suspect that the rapid growth and popularity of Preca's movement could have heretical implications, especially as it involved so many of the low-skilled and uneducated. The new society received criticism in the press, and in 1916, Bishop Morris Caruana opened a formal inquiry. This cleared the movement of any negative behavior and paved the way in due course for ecclesiastical recognition of the Society of Christian Doctrine on 12 April 1932. It was at the height of the crisis that Preca claimed to have received a powerful religious experience in 1910. One morning, as he passed the Marsa Cross, triggered by a child aged 12 pushing a cart with a bag of manure, who had shouted, Lend me your hand. Preca helped him, and as he placed his hands on the cart, he felt profound spiritual calmness and understood that he had experienced a revelation as the boy symbolized Christ and the wagon the work of evangelizing. Preca became a third order Carmelite after being admitted on 21st July 1918 and made his profession on 26 September 1919 with the new religious name of Franco. In the parishes, Preca established nativity plays at Christmas time, a custom maintained to this day in almost all the parishes of Malta. Despite his ability in Italian and English, Preca taught and wrote in Maltese, the language of the common people, so that everyone could understand. He wrote about 150 booklets, pamphlets, and leaflets. To publish and spread his works, he obtained a printing press and founded in the 1920s what would become Veritas Press, 
one of the main Catholic publishing companies in Malta. Throughout his pastoral mission, he was a popular preacher and sought-after confessor. In 1957, he composed five new mysteries for the rosary for his followers, which he had referred to as Mysteries of Light. He was canonized as a saint by the Catholic Church in 2007. Preka died in the evening of 26 July 1962. His funeral on 28 July was one of the largest funerals ever held in Malta. Placing all our petitions before him today, let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for all you have done for us through your life, death and resurrection. You are the living gospel that we should follow in our lives each day. Help us to teach people about you as St. George Brecker did. May we share your word with others following his example of faith. Amen. For our gospel reflection, we have the gospel taken from John chapter 15 verses 9 to 17. Let us now patiently listen to this gospel text. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear sisters and brothers, a teacher once was testing his students in an expository writing class just to see how well they had mastered the principles of grammar. He asked the class, Is love a noun or a verb? Is love a noun or a verb? A self-confident young man in the back of the room offered this response. He said, On Fridays and Saturdays, evenings, love is a verb and the rest of the time it's just a noun. Well, our gospel lesson for today is the continuation of our Lord's delightful discourse on wine and branches that began last Sunday. Realizing that his time was short, Jesus encourages his followers to remain closely connected with God and also with one another. 
Jesus also makes a subtle connection between love and obedience. Two significant words that are normally that we normally do not always think of as complementary concepts. Love requires some form of commitment or determination or else it remains a mindless emotion. Such obedience should and must serve a greater good, a greater cause, bringing about some clear benefits to the community or in, in the persons involved. Love as a noun is a joyful reality. It is a benevolent concern for another, a term of endearment. It is an intense feeling of affection and care for another person or a deep and abiding liking for another. However, love as a verb is a much stronger expression. It anticipates action. As long as love is a noun, we can discuss it, analyze it, and even make abstract statements about it. But when love becomes a verb, we must do something. It's said one can give without loving. For example, giving food to the beggar at the door. But one cannot love without giving. For example, our time, our energy, our talents, etc. This is exactly what Jesus had in mind when he said, Abide in my love or remain connected with me and also with one another. Now, dear friends, abiding with Jesus means spending quality time with Jesus. Abiding with Jesus means sharing with him the best time of our daily life and spending that time to grow in his love and intimacy. Now, as we spend quality time with Jesus, something happens gradually to us. We share our lives and all that happens to us with him. We pour out our thoughts to him. As we gradually reflect over the words of our Lord in the scriptures, we are gradually soaked up by his words and they become part of our lives. We become aware that the words in the Bible are words of pure love and concern for us from our loving and caring Father. As we spend quality time with Jesus, we allow him to spend quality time with us and by doing so, we get new insights concerning our life and world around us. When we spend quality time with Jesus, we experience happiness and delight at a deeper level and such prayer time becomes the happiest moments of our day. It is then the words of Jesus in the Gospel today makes sense. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Furthermore, as we spend quality time with Jesus, we gradually become aware that there is a way of living that pleases Jesus and we make every effort to learn and live that way. It's then what Jesus says in the Gospel today makes perfect sense. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. In fact, while living a lifestyle like that of Jesus, a life that pleases God, commandments don't seem to be commandments anymore. But they are to us a natural way of living just like Jesus lived. So, how can we remain in the love of Jesus? It's very simple. We remain in Jesus' love by keeping his commandments. Obeying the commandments of Jesus is not a restriction anymore, but a source of pure joy.
because it all flows from spending quality time with Jesus. Dear friends, we are today challenged by Jesus to create intimate family connections, both in good and in hard times. We are challenged to create intimate family connections that bind us together with others who, like us, also love the Lord. Now, besides Peter and Andrew, James and John, there were no blood connections or genealogical linkage that bound the original disciples together and all others who later became members of the early church. So also in this wine and branches discourse, Jesus fashions a new imagery of a family tree for his followers, not formed of cedar or oak, but instead fashioned of a wine, a twisting, a spreading, interweaving, living reality that has as its ultimate purpose abiding with the wine and bearing quality fruits that are lasting. Dear sisters and brothers, today we also observe Mother's Day. Many might ridicule this observance as just sentimental. For example, a great bonanza for florists, restaurants, greeting card companies and souvenir shops. Sometimes it is very difficult to relate Mother's Day to the assigned readings of Sunday. But that's not the case this year. The words of Jesus in the Gospel today are most appropriate for the observance of Mother's Day. First and foremost, Jesus speaks about tenacious love. I mean to say, love that will not let you go. Remain in my love, Jesus says. Keep my commandments and abide in my love. If we are to think of one expression that captures the spirit of most mothers, it would be tenacious love. Such a love captures a desire to retain, preserve, protect and hold together. So are all our mothers. Through their love for their children, they show their faithfulness, fortitude and determination that makes a lot of difference in us. The second thing that Mother's Day calls to our remembrance is the tremendous impact mothers have in the lives of their children and their families. The words of Jesus do pick up this theme of sacrificial love, which is also clearly visible in the lives of our mothers. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. Dear friends, if there was one human being who had the greatest influence and impact on Jesus, it was his mother Mary. For Mary's role in the divine plan was not just limited to Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. She remained connected to her son until the very end, even standing beside him as he hung on the cross. Finally, on Mother's Day, we are reminded that whatever might be our home and however we might describe the reality of that home, we actually find home where we find our mother. Again, Jesus speaks of a sense of connection with him that builds a new sense of belonging. We could also say a new sense of home and family for us Christians. We are no longer servants, but we are his friends. And this testifies to a profound relationship. This relationship is rooted in his defining presence And it is a call to be in the world, motivated by a desire to love and enrich the lives of others. Dear friends, wherever mother is, that is where home is. 
wherever true charity and love abide god is dwelling there we are not supposed to confine our gratitude to only one day when we celebrate mother's day or confine our thoughts to an overpriced hallmark card the finest way for us to express gratitude to our mothers is not through gifts or flowers or church attendance although such gestures our are nice and certainly appreciated the highest and noblest tribute we can give to our mothers whether living or dead is for us to be kind loving gentle and creatively caring human beings may god bless us all so that our lives may be lived in gratitude for those who have first loved us let us end our reflection with a short prayer lord help us to grow in trust and conviction that your love for us is genuine and sacrificial amen my dear friends the psalm 98 verses 1 to 4 reminds us that the saving power of god is to be proclaimed to all peoples in all nations how appropriate is it for us to hear this psalm as we contemplate the apostolic or missionary calling that each of us has received the saving power of god can reach all peoples through the living out of the good news in the loving service and lives of believers this is the first and best way for people to experience the good news through the loving service and care that believers show to each other and to those who still need to become familiar with the message of god's love Let's pray that psalm now. Your response: The Lord has shown His deliverance to the nations. The Lord has shown His deliverance to the nations. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord, for He has worked wonders. His right hand and His holy arm have brought salvation. The Lord has shown his deliverance to the nations. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his deliverance to the nations. He has remembered his merciful love and his truth for the house of Israel. The Lord has shown his deliverance to the nations. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord all the earth break forth into joyous song and sing out your praise The Lord has shown his deliverance to the nations Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen my dear friends today we celebrate mothers day let's recite this prayer in gratitude for our mothers good and gentle god we pray in gratitude for our mothers and for all the women of theory who have joined with you in the wonder of bringing forth new life you who became human through a woman grant to all mothers the courage they need to face the uncertain future that life with children always brings give them the strength to live and to be loved in return not perfectly but humanly give them the faithful support of husband 
family and friends as they care for the physical and spiritual growth of their children give them joy and delight in their children to sustain them through the trials of motherhood most of all give them the wisdom to turn to you for help when they need it most amen prayer for relief from the corona virus almighty and merciful god who show your love to all creation everywhere hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the corona virus in various parts of the world we come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak for a healing of those affected for the victims and their families we thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine we pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic we pray that the vaccine be available for all our people even the poor and those in rural areas we pray for doctors nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts we pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people we make this prayer through christ our lord amen pray for god's blessing in a special way let's pray for all our mothers may almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit amen my dear friends we remember today all those who are celebrating their birthday especially mahima mercy pereira from bengaluru and asher fernandez from goa asher is celebrating his first birthday wish you all a happy birthday god bless you Cyprian Jerome and Nelly Selin Pinto from Mira Road presently in Muscat Felix Pinto and Ivy Natalia from Abu Dhabi George and Plossy Philomena Krasta from Abu Dhabi celebrating silver jubilee of wedding Marcus Almeida and Daphne Merlin de Souza from Kundapur Udupi Michael and Dulcin Morris from Jogeshwari Mumbai Rexin Martis and Preeti De Souza from Kulshekar Mangalore are celebrating their wedding anniversary today we congratulate them and pray god's choices blessings on them that's all for today my dear friends See you tomorrow once again happy mothers day all the mothers may god bless you all we continue to pray for all those are suffering from covid-19 those who are in isolation the volunteers the doctors and the nurses have a great sunday and we thank reverend father ratan almeida for sharing his reflection with us today bye bye